Hey, howdy. Welcome back to Making Part Sheets. Today we are going to do um, some chemical reactions with the type of glass that we have and the powders. And I think that'll make a really neat idea. This one is this really cool brick. And I am going to just place it down. Now this is Dense White by Bullseye. And... Um, Dense white is a lead-based uh, glass. So we know that we can get sulfur-based powder to react with it. And I'm gonna use my carnelian, which I love my carnelian, it's a beautiful color. Um, and I'm going to make bricks. Now, I've not actually tried carnelian with the dense white yet, but it should give me a reaction, and I'm hoping that some of the reddish-orange color stays. But I doubt that it will since it's on an opal sheet here. Uh, I cut this down to fit the pattern a little bit better. Normally, I do my part sheets about six inches wide, but this uh, template plastic the pattern is only about three and a half inches. So, and I'm gonna put some down here too. Can you still see that on camera? I might have to adjust myself. But I'll put some down there too, so I'm gonna try not to get too much overspray going on there. And you'll wanna have it so that it is pretty thick but it doesn't have to be super duper thick. Like if you see in here, let me zoom in a little bit. If you see in here, maybe you can't see it on camera. It's a little bit lighter. And I did that on purpose to see what, um, what it looks like when we're done. So I'm gonna ever so gently pick this up and tap it off. I'm still work, whoops. And see, that wasn't bad. I kind of wiggled up here, but it'll be okay. I'm still working with the camera in a different position, and I'm trying to figure out if that's going to be okay for me. So I'm going to bump this up just a little bit so you can see down here. I'm going to replace the stencil, but I need something to hold the, the edges because I don't want it to sag. I want it to lay flat. And I'm going to get it as close as I can to that other one. So there will be a small gap in my pattern, but that's okay because most of these I tend to cut up and use in my fused glass pieces or in stained glass. So I will finish this off. Gently lift with a wing and a prayer. So we've got a little bit of a gap, so it looks like they miss the bricks. But that's okay. Let me go put this in the kiln, and I will be right back with you. Now, like I said in the first video, this stuff is too expensive, if you can't tell already, to throw it away. So you do this on a piece of smooth paper. I've seen some people do it on the textured paper that comes between your glass, but... Honestly, I, um, I don't have good luck with that, getting it all off. So I put it back in there, and then I shake my paper out a little bit. And yes, you should be wearing a mask when you're working with powder. However, I know I will sound very muffled to you, so I'm not. Um, but I'm in a very large room, and I do have ventilation. So, our next one that we're going to do, we'll stick with the dense white theme for the moment, because I have another half sheet of it, or quarter sheet, and let's turn it this way so you can see it better. I'm going to use French vanilla, because I love dense white and French vanilla. It's such an awesome... Um, grungy kind of output. I, I just, I like it a lot. And I will 
I'll take some French vanilla, and obviously this is Bullseye Opal French Vanilla. And I will get a nice, even coat of it. And actually, the higher up you hold it, the better control you have on getting an even coat. Uh, when you hold it down lower, you tend to get splotchy. And actually, I shouldn't be tapping up here. I should be tapping back here on the handle because that actually gives you a better control over the amount that comes out as well. And I'm going to go across this way. And I can still see spots of the white poking through, which in some cases, that's a good design element. You can have um, a light coating or a heavier coating, but we're going to draw on this, so I'm going to go across this way now and try to catch all the places I missed. to give us more coverage. There's a couple of ways that you can do a, like a scraffito into this. And I like, uh, one of the ways is to use a razor blade. And I like that because you can kind of get really interesting skinny and fat lines at the same time. But this one I actually want to do a um, like a graphic pattern. So you could just scribble on it and it would be really cool. Uh, but I'm gonna do like a, a line, line, dot, 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 dot. And a line, line, dot, 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 dot. And this is just a metal or a wooden skewer. And I'm not sure why I'm doing this pattern. It just kind of was an idea I had and thought, well, I'll try it. Now over here, I'm going to do dots, do some lines, and it doesn't have to be perfect unless you want it to be because it's your glass, it's your design. So as a matter of fact, what I might do here is do the scribble part I was telling you about. Now these little furrows that are sticking up are going to give you like a fuzzy edge and that will be kind of cool when you see it uh, fired if you don't want it you can actually I think most of you that have been doing this for a while have seen the little earwax vacuums you can use one of those I tend to only use that on smaller pieces because it tends to fill up quick and I can only get, I can't control the size of the line as well, but if it doesn't matter what the size of the line is, eh, that's fine. So we're going to put this one in the kiln and I'll be right back. So for the next one, I'm going to use some aloe vera gel to hold down stringers and we're going to use a spring green, which is a transparent. You can use the opaque as well. Actually, opaque probably works better, um, but I don't have any, and I want to try it with the transparent. And then I've got these little one millimeter dense white stringers, and I loosened my lid so that I wouldn't be fighting with it. And I'm just going to make some pattern with the stringers. And the reason I have the aloe vera is you put the stringer on the glass, it's okay there, but you walk it to the kiln, it's gonna roll around. So I'm gonna put just a little bit on my hands and I'm gonna dab around the edges. And I know some people say you have to use the, um, the clear aloe vera. I haven't had any issue with any of it. So now we'll wrap the rest of this in might be a mistake but we'll see and I 
just kind of want to make, I have an idea here for kind of a graphic-y pattern. These break very easy with your fingers, so I don't want it straight. And it's obviously a little bit long there. That's okay. It's easier to lay it down and measure what you need. Don't swing it around. I may not have put enough aloe down, but that's something we'll check in a, in a few minutes. See if it keeps rolling. Put this one here. this one down here and what I'm imagining this piece being is not cut up I'm imagining it will be an overlay or a centerpiece to a platter or something to that effect I want to break this off right about here and I'm not sure if I want to get super duper intense on this. I might just want to go with these and see how it comes out. Um, if I put too much in there, then it might get too busy and ruin my design. But that's up to you. If you wanted to go up and down with it, if you want it to crisscross. Actually, that might not be a bad idea. Do a little crisscross across. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, this would make a good spider web, wouldn't it? Uh, that would be a cool spider web. I'm not going to do that because in my mind I have something else planned. Anyway, we'll put this in the kiln. I'll be right back. Okay, I'll be honest with you. While I was walking to the kiln, they did move, so I did not put enough aloe. Um, I had to rearrange them while they were in the kiln. Now, this is light aquamarine, and we're going to make some snowflakes with the French vanilla again. So that will make some pretty good uh, snowflakes for us. I did put the handy dandy uh, tape picker upper things so that I can lift straight up with this. And I'm going to move it down just a little bit on camera so I have enough paper on this side to dump my powder. And we're going to make it as easy as possible. We're going to dump this way. So, I will place this down, get my French vanilla, and I think I'm going to use my smaller so that I don't have a whole bunch of extra powder on here because when you lift this up, you really don't want to uh, have a lot of weight on the middle part of the pattern which could potentially lead to an accident. I've had a request for this uh, sifter and I bought it from Rio Grande which is a jewelry supply. Um, I used it with my enamels. I have not been able to find it uh, anyplace else I did find a set, um, but it was from a website I'd never heard of. I shared that on the first video. It's um, down in the comments where I was asked about this, uh, this sifter. And Rio, I think you have to have a um, professional account with them to order. So if you have a professional account, you can uh, order them. If not, let me know and I can order some and put them like in my Etsy store or on my website uh, for people to be able to get this style. It is nice having the longer handle. The only downside is, is it's plastic and the little ridges, they flatten out a little bit, but as you can see, I'm not having a problem getting the powder to come out with just my fingernail. It's 
So doing a whole pattern like this eh, takes a little bit of time, but not too much. If I get better at video editing, I will speed this up so that you being quiet because if I'm going to fast forward it, there's probably no reason to be talking. Um, but French vanilla should give us a really neat grungy snowflake. And I have done some of the snowflakes with opaline, which is really kind of cool. Flakes with opaline, which is really kind of cool, but it's hard to see all the time. So here's your moment of truth. Straight up, over, tap off. And we're going to turn it so that I am not. Now, if you noticed on that turn, this one here had a high amount on it. And it kind of spread out just a little bit. I'm not worried about that. It's just gonna be part of the design. I think the only way that you'd be able to get a transferred pattern onto the glass, and I can do this in another video for you, where you don't have um, like feathery edges upon close inspection, because honestly, you're not going to see it uh, too much from a distance or from the viewing angle, but you can screen print on glass as well and I have done that a few times I enjoy it it's just more of a process to set up and take down for me um, maybe now that I've got this studio I can get organized a little bit better and it'd be easier to do because I have some really cool screen prints or screens to use um, Tanya at AAE Glass has got a ton of different screens already made that you can buy. And I actually bought some screen making uh, blanks, so I guess that's what they're called, to take some of my own photographs or images and make my own screens. And what's cool about the ones that I got is you don't need the UV light set up. You just put them out in the sun. So it's not really a winter project, but I guess it could be as long as you had it out early enough. And the sun actually develops it for you. I need to adjust my hand because I'm holding this a little bit weird down here. I'm trying to keep it as straight as possible. I noticed that on my others I was getting a tilt and my powder was bunching up on one side of my hopper. So I'm seeing if I can hold it straighter. Some days my hands don't cooperate with me. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I um, I did have chemo in 2016 and uh, got a little bit of neuropathy. It's more in my legs and my feet, but I do have some in my hands. I've got some arthritis going on. I'm getting old. Poo-poo <laughs> happens, right? Now this one's going to be tricky to pick up because see how thick I got it right there? I did not mean to do that, but I was making my joke. Alright, wing and a prayer. Eh, it's not too bad. Let me go put this one in the kiln. That's going to be a pretty little pattern. Okay, the last two I'm going to do are back on clear Tecta. And... <laughs> this first one, it's really a fun thing to do. I mean, you cannot control your pattern at all, which 
okay, whatever. So I'm going to take my um, French vanilla. Sorry, my brain kind of stalled for a minute. And I'm going to put down French vanilla with uh, turquoise blue. And you will get a cool little pattern or reaction from that. So I'm going to do the layer. And this one you can actually layer it a few times if you want to. But I tend to just do a decent layer of each because unless you're going to stop and clean up, which I might, um, in between the colors you can't recover your powder. And I'm getting low on French vanilla, so I really kind of want to recover as much as I can of that. I think I might have another one over there, but I'm not sure. And this technique I saw, I think I actually saw it on the bullseye site, or on a bullseye video. I'm not sure um, how many of you have uh, access to the, the bullseye videos. They're really cool. They, they're on YouTube, but they have some uh, paid versions that you can, you can do as well. So we're going to do turquoise blue opal on top of this. Let me just try this. Instead of spooning it, we'll just get a good glob there. And a lot of times I'll put the white on top. Um, this time I wanted the turquoise on top to see if I can get more blue look in the finished and see see all the little bubbles in there the little knobs I was trying to recover some that I had wet and obviously that kind of clumps your powder but I'm a cheapskate so and when you're using the sifting screen you uh, you catch it and honestly a few lumps might be kind of cool in there we might throw them in and see what happens. And this one I'm not being as meticulous about going up and back, up and back, because I do want some heavier spots and some lighter spots to help with the reactions. So... Some of those are coming through, see them? Which is okay. Especially with what we're doing. The next step is kind of fun. We are taking a pipette and some water and holding it really high. And we are dropping drops. In random locations and I do I hold this up pretty darn high so I can get a, um, a good splatter so to speak this is great if you need an organic background or if you like a grungy background It comes out unpredictable, but it's always cool. It's always been really neat. And I don't want to 
merge too many of my dots, so I should aim a little bit better and get back up high. Having it higher up pushes the powder more. I missed where I wanted to go. There we go. And you can put as much or as little as you want. I think I'm going to stop after this little bubble. Well, I guess it's not coming off. Anyhow, I will put this in the kiln. Now, see how this went all the way down to the glass? That's actually kind of cool, too. And we'll look at that after it fires so that you can see how cool that actually is. And you can get, you can plan it. You know, you can hit it harder and get the to the glass look. Okay, I'm pretty sure I don't have to tell you to be very careful with the razor blade. Um because it's sharp, but we're gonna do another chemical reaction, which is French vanilla and dense white. And it makes kind of a gray color in between. It's pretty cool. And on this one again, you can get really meticulous with your uh, layer but I'm not, I'm gonna leave it a little splotchy in there. Because with this, it's not gonna be that much of an issue. Was the French vanilla and we're gonna put some of the dense white you know what we might do with this one too we might have three colors because the carnelian might look pretty cool in here as well so you guys get to experiment with me So I'm just going to randomly throw down this dense white. I'm not going to worry about getting it even, getting it across. I'm just going to have a wild little pattern. And then we're going to put the carnelian on top because actually it's a transparent and that might be really an awesome look. It could come out looking like mud too, I don't know. But um, this is how we learn. And I'm going to make this kind of splotchy too. Now with the razor blade, like I was saying, you can go thin, you can go thick, you can swoosh it from side to side. So, like this pattern, see how when I uh, tilted it some, you get a thicker. And sometimes you just need a graphic fun thing to put. And if you go straight up and down, you obviously get thinner lines. I like pulling it so that I get a little bit of a trough there because then I know I'm gonna get all those colors that are in there showing up somehow, interacting with each other. Okay. 
I think that's kind of cool. All right, I'm going to fire these and I will show them to you when they're done and post this video. So please like, subscribe, and share my videos. I appreciate it. Um, one of the other ones I have coming up for fused glass. Well, no, that, oh yeah, I do. Um, I'm going to try and do like a glass mosaic with maybe this really sparkly dichroic uh, frit as my grout. Um, I'm gonna look at the cost of that first because if I do a big one like I'm planning on, it could get kind of pricey. What I might do is just put that in as an after effect on top of my grout colors. We'll see. Coming up though. Okay, I'm gonna throw one bonus at the end here because I just wanna see what this comes out looking like. And I'm not sure on this template. See that, that one's not even poked out. Um, I'm not sure if this is gonna be too detailed to give me a, a good impression. So I think I'm going to use some turquoise. And actually I probably should use the big strainer, it will go faster. Ooh, maybe I'm going to do this with a chemical reaction too, but in stripes. What do you think about that? Put some blues here. Um... I don't know if the carnelian is going to react with the blue. I'd have to look those up and see. The blue. Where's my spoon? There it is. I don't need it for this one. Now I'm talking to myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to put some of this carnelian. Just kind of making a, a random pattern that may or may not give us a really cool reaction. And we'll throw some of the dense white or French vanilla. Let's see. I think we should use the French vanilla. I don't think the dense white is going to, um, well, hmm. Let me think about that. Let's do the dense white. Oops, bang the camera. Sorry. Because the dense white is lead-based. It's got lead in it. And the blue and the carnelian, I believe they are, yep, they're, um, copper. I think the blue is copper based, which may not have much of a reaction at all with the lead, but I know that, let me look at my notes here, carnelian is sulfur based, so that should have a reaction. All right, let me uh, ever so gently up and over. Oh, that's pretty. All right, I think that's all I can fit in my kiln for right now. I'll walk over and give you a shot of that in a second. Okay, here is the kiln before with sunlight coming through the window. So we've got the bricks and the squigglies lines that really pretty one 
snowflakes, razor blade, and water drops. So we're going to do a contour fuse, and I probably made you guys seasick coming up that quick, but we're going to do a contour fuse, and I'll see you tomorrow when it's finished. Okay, well here we have them in the light box, and I stood them up. Now that one is the one we just did, and it was on, let me reach in here, it was on the white, the dense white background. I put this one next to it because it's one that I had done on clear, but with the same colors. So you can see if you do it on clear, you get a little bit more um, light, obviously. And then here is our little stand-up one. I really like that. That would be pretty in pink, maybe, as the center of a flower. Ideas, ideas, ideas. Lots of ideas. Here's our green with the um, stringers. And I like the reaction on the stringers because it gave it like a, a white gray. I mean, it's more gray than it is white. But at certain angles, and it's not showing up good on camera, you can still see some of the white. The bricks I love. I actually use this brick template um, to paint... Uh, a piece for my best friend. I did her a um, clock with uh, Pink Floyd. And of course I needed the wall. So, and here's our snowflakes. I really like how those came out too. That would work good with just using plain old white to get nice white snowflakes. So, Anyhow, I'm quite happy with part two. Oh, our grungy one is really cool. This is the, oh, I can't reach it. This is the dots that went clear through. And those kind of give a really organic look. So anyhow, I have a few more ideas I can share with you. So maybe there will be a part three coming up. Um, I kind of experimented with that carnelian on top. And you know, it's neat. Look at how you got some of the gray coming through. I wonder if I would have done it in a different order. Just to get the, the different effects. I'll have to try it again. But these will be really cool pieces to add to my stained glass or my fused glass. And I think I have a sample. Let me look over here of how I used one in a dish. Here we go, here it is in a dish where I used the um, the part sheet. And I have another one, but it's actually at a store that I have some of my stuff in. And it was done with reds, which kind of came out cool too. Um, but anyhow, you can, Incorporate it as simple as this or make more elaborate designs. It's all up to you. Thanks.